Okay. Um, on my list of shit uh, here, stuff here, on my list of stuff here is uh, the router, the PFSense router over there. <clears throat> it's a super micro system. And uh, every couple days it turns off. And uh, I just determined it had two different sticks of RAM in it. One was 8 gig and one was 16, which is kind of weird. Uh, I removed the 8 just to see if that helps. And I also uh, had some extra of these ch chassis and uh, went ahead and replaced the power supply um, and the uh, square page fan that was in it just, just to be on the safe side. Um, and I did figure out the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, air conditioner over there is not, uh, functioning at all, so it won't even turn on, it's like it's got no power to it, so, uh, that'll just get mentioned, I don't think that's really the problem, but it ain't helping, it probably just gets cooking in that room. Um, we have our Odom on the other side of that door. Uh, and that Odom goes to, um, that's the start of a new system. Uh, today we're going to be going and checking out, ow, uh, one of our new pops, um, down in Pokemon. Now, our core network in Salisbury will, uh, extend, oh man, will extend all the way down to Pokemon. So I think it's like 27 miles or something like that. Uh, so we're gonna head on down and uh, we'll take a look at that, but it should be I think we're gonna have enough capacity there for um, eight, eight four post racks. So we'll see how that goes Well, we are now at our new facility here in Pokemon We bought the uh, old Pokemon firehouse here as you can see she's pretty pretty awesome spot um, and there's this really cool like hose drying tower around back um, but we are uh, like the real estate part of the company is putting nine apartments in here and then we're like right downtown basically we're on 5th street um, and as you see there's like this gnarly tower on here that's a hose drying tower. But this is going to be our uh, fiber pop um, here in Pokemon. We'll go see what's going on. So, look at that. That dude's apartment is going to have a 19 foot ceiling. They're all, uh, they're all lofts. There's eight, eight lofts upstairs. And they are um, required to get our internet service. And then same thing here. This is the handicap uh, unit. Um, and then we go over here through this door. This is a handicap bathroom. Then there is this giant commercial space that'll be for a business. Um, so there'll be 10 users in the building, just like Alf the Get. Um, and then this is going to be our uh, little data, data, data room, data center, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just going to be like a utility style. Um, these two four inch conduits are going outside the building to ground boxes and that's going to be the jump, jump point. I think one's probably going east, one's probably going to go west, something like that. Um, we're going to ladder the room and uh, four post racks here through the middle. Um, and then this is super, super fucking cool. This is the uh, hose drying room and uh, I climbed it, but I don't really feel like climbing it again today. Um, it's like 80 feet or something. But what they, uh, firemen would do is they would light a fire down here. They had a, probably a furnace and uh, they would uh, take the hose all the way up to the top, drape it over a pipe and let it hang back down. And uh, that would dry the hoses out so they don't get, well, I don't really know why, but they didn't want them wet. Uh, it's pretty cool because every, like, 15 feet, there's that platform. Uh, but, oof. Um, it is the old uh, Pokemon Firehouse. It's been vacant for 20 years. So, uh, we got, uh, 
we got us a pretty good deal here. Um, it's cool because this is about 15 miles to our next pop. Uh, and then at the same, so it's 15 miles to our next closest pop. But also, it comes with 10 customers. So you figure right off the get, we got $1,000 a month in uh, fiber customers. And then over... Uh, there in the ground is some of the conduit network that we're going to be sharing with Maryland Broadband and stuff. So, ten people in or eight people in that um, uh, little office there, and then you know you figure we're surrounded by residential. So, um, it's Kirk's Kirk's War Wagon. Um, it's impressive that it's still operating, but uh, yeah. So we'll be uh, working on this over the next few months. Um, we'll be doing DWDM um, G and then GPON. So I'll DWDM up here uh, out of Salisbury with the 10 gig circuit. Um, maybe two tens, honestly. And we can get all our capacity up here if we want. Uh, we'll have two tens and then a GPON uh, OLT set. Uh, and then hell, honestly, maybe some wireless stuff up on that on that roof. Be cool. These are some off-lease, uh, there we go, off-lease Aristas. And these things are pretty cool. Um, they are uh, 52 port, 10 gig, all SFP cages. That's exactly what we need. And they support 80 kilometer optics. Uh, Uplink ports, I don't know why they're different, but I bet you they can be bonded to make like a 40 or something strange. Like otherwise, why would they be like that? But uh, a couple different things to note here that I have never experienced is they need both power supplies to boot. So I bet you anything that this is a setting. Um, the other thing to note uh, we've got 100 gig Celestica. We've got some Juniper stuff. I've got a Cisco. I've got FS. The CLI output that's taken place during it. And I've got this recording on my computer because I've never seen anything like it. So I've got a console cable hooked up to the computer. And A, listen to these fucking things rock and roll. But more importantly is that... Uh, I'm going to plug them in. Uh, it's going to be louder and shit. And then we can just probably just switch over um, to the console. And the console, it's it's like, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like Windows, like, it's like Windows 3.1 booting up for the first time. There's so, it takes minutes and uh, I'm recording this so that I can actually go back and look at what it all says because it all happened so fast. Um, hopefully I can get these things working. I already uh, logged in and you basically run enable, configure, and then you're at like a normal CLI that I'm used to. Um, so let's go ahead and, and I'm gonna plug these jokers in. We can see what, see what we're cooking out. Notice this is just the one. Uh, We'll go ahead and it will not boot. It'll go into freak out mode with just the one power supply. When I plug the second one in, it'll kind of, oh, excuse me. Uh, it'll go into chill mode just for a second. Let's make sure it is in fact booting. Yeah, it just pops up. It says Arista Networks. Um, and then after the Arista Network screen goes off, it will uh, it'll kind of chill chill out. This is a back I mean uh, front to, uh, back to front uh, style switch, um, which is just it's cool. I don't really mind it, but uh, yeah, check out the uh, the other side of this.